Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the campus here at Londonderry High School, home of the Lancers. Jason Roby here along with the highlight guy, Steve Cody, on the moving pictures. It is our Live with Liv segment. We are here with head coach of the Bishop Curtin Cardinals, Liv Orlando. And coach, let's talk first a little bit about that Concord game, a great win for your girls. What yeah. did you take from that win uh, yeah. watching the film back? Yeah, so watching the film, I, I was just super proud of the execution, right? We did what we set out to do that game. We wanted to defend like crazy, and we wanted to execute. So right now, we're so young, we're gonna get to know each other, we're building chemistry, building team culture, all of those things, right? So going in, we're, that, that was our goal. Like, it doesn't matter win or loss. Can we execute and can we defend like crazy and apply the pressure to someone else? And I thought they did a great job. You didn't play a game for, it was about seven days yeah. or so, give or take. Yep. Was that was that good quality time well yeah. spent for your team to yeah. kind of review those things? And then maybe not just talk about this Londonderry team, but work on some other things down yeah. the road as well. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it's always a good stretch to be able to get a lot of practices in, right? I think what was great for us is our girls just had midterms and, you know, we had a couple of girls that were run down. So it was a good, you know, they had had a day off to kind of reset, recoup, rejuvenate, and then we got after it. Like we, it was a, a lot of you know getting shots up and, and finishing through contact and a lot of the fundamental skills that you know when you're in the season you don't always have a ton of time to really like nail on and work on because you're you know you want to get in your offense and your defense yeah. and your scheme and your scouting teams and all that stuff. So it was definitely a good a good stretch for us to to really nail down those those small things. And I, going back to that congregate, it was a great yeah. win. And, and I one thing Thank that kind of stood out in my mind. Aside from the three pointers, it was like raining from the outside. I yeah. couldn't say Yahtzee anymore yeah. throughout the first half. <laughs> Over two from the foul line. Yeah. That's a stat that I haven't seen in I don't know how many years we've been doing this, but yeah. does that scare you a little bit or, or not so much? Yeah, so um, free throws we nail home at every single practice, and yeah. it's something that we practice daily because, again, they're huge. They'll win and lose you games. I think that was you know, a big part of our loss against Goffstown. Like yeah. we. We, we weren't hitting, and they were from the yeah. free throw line. So it's definitely um, not something I'm scared of, but something that we know we have to be better in and something we're working towards to improve. Sure. Yeah. This Londonderry team you're playing here tonight, a 3-0 and team, a nail-biter against Portsmouth. They had yeah. that one pretty well in hand yeah. in the fourth quarter until Portsmouth kind of figured it out. Right. But it's a, a very formidable Londonderry team. Yeah. Uh, what can you tell us about this team you're going to yeah, see here tonight? They're solid. They're super talented. Uh, the really interesting and kind of unique part about them is they have kids on firing on all cylinders at all at all times on the floor, right? Mm. So they're driving and getting layups or they're kicking it out and every single kid can shoot it. So they're, they're super talented. We just have to be able to defend. Again, yeah. that's like a common goal for us always, but also win our matchups. Like that will be huge. Um, playing team defense, but more importantly, like winning our matchups and having pride on defense. Maybe a team that's a, a year older, a yeah. year more experienced, but kind of like looking at looking at them is like looking at you yeah. from the three-point barrage standpoint from playing defense. The one thing where maybe you have a little bit of advantage, they're not as long in the bench, so yeah. you tend to get out and run a little bit against these Absolutely. guys? Absolutely. That's what we're hoping for. Yeah. Love to get out in transition. Again, we have our half-court offense, but we'd love to get those easy buckets. Those outside shots look a lot better once we get some buddies. That's awesome. We're yeah. excited to see this one here tonight. Talk to a little bit coach yeah. uh, at the highlight guy we're going to try to get to one of your uh, your your christmas tournament awesome. games your holiday tournament games talk to us about who you're going to play where that's going to be and when that is yeah yeah so we are playing in a christmas tournament at hollis brookline so first day um we're playing salem and then the second day it's kind of like pool play so it's it well basically all of the games are pool play after you you have to figure out you know who wins who moves on sort of championship play it's kind of a jamboree style though so we're going 10 and 12 first day, um, and then we go back at it. First game's at 12, and then to be determined for the afternoon game. But should be fun. There's Salem, Hollis Brookline, uh, Goffstown's in it again, so we'll see them again. Awesome, yeah, awesome. so a little. Yeah, should little be good. Of, yeah. Well, listen, really looking forward to, to, to tonight. Yeah. Obviously, some fun stuff coming up in the holiday season, but sure. a lot of business to take care of before we get there. Absolutely. Want to wish you best of luck tonight. Thank you. She is Liv Orlando, the Appreciate head coach it. of the Bishop Girton Cardinals. We'll be right back with the tip off after this. Thank you. Thanks, Liv. Thanks, guys. All right. Appreciate it.
All right, we are back at the campus of Londonderry High School here in Londonderry, New Hampshire. Jason Roby here along with Steve Cody, the highlight guy. Going to be bringing you all the action here in what promises to be a great competition tonight. This is a Londonderry team that beat Exeter 67-33. to They played a tough South team and beat them 67-49. And the game we mentioned in the pregame, a two-point win over Portsmouth. This is a Londonderry team that was out about 21 points or so before Portsmouth kind of came back in that fourth quarter to make it interesting. But uh, fortunately for the Lancers and Coach Doherty, they were able to eke out a two-point victory in that one. Uh, meanwhile, this Bishop Girton team comes in at 1-1. One and one. We saw them in their opener against Goffstown. A lot of people think are a top four or five team here in the state, as is this Londonderry team. Uh, and then they beat Concord High School in a game where they didn't seem to miss from beyond the arc. But obviously, when you're shooting as well from the three-point stripe, you're not going to get a lot of free throw opportunities. They were 0 for 2. That's right, just two free throws in their last win. So some interesting uh, numbers there if you like to crunch that stuff. Me, I'm a cinnamon toast crunch guy, Steve. All right, we are here at the home of the Lancers. We're going to meet the starting lineups for both teams right now. And if you had to pick a top four, top to bottom, you'd probably come up with maybe five teams. And we'll talk about them in just a moment as we meet the starters for Gert and Maddie Long, a sophomore for Coach Orlando. Ayla Regan, a junior, getting the start. Bella Fayed, another sophomore for Coach Orlando and the Cards. Holly Dufo, a freshman starter. And rounding out the starting five, Talia Drapo, a sophomore. So it is a youth movement of sorts here, Steve. Meanwhile, at uh, the highlight guy, we, uh, we are a little long in the tooth. We'll get to that a little bit later. Now let's meet the starters for the home team, the Londonderry Lancers, in their home whites. Reagan Anderson, a name that we are well familiar with, a junior guard. Kate Sloper, another girl returning from that team a year ago. She's also a junior. Brooke Ekrit, another sophomore guard. Number 20 is Gemma Murray, freshman guard. And of course, Samantha Sullivan, fantastic player. Nice uh, read about her in the union leader today, just a sophomore. So the youth movement also happening with the Lancers. We'll be right back as we uh, take this time out for the national anthem. for the tip-off. Good singing of the national anthem there. We will be joined at halftime by Bedford head coach. Coach Kevin Gibbs is here in attendance, and he'll be joining the highlight guy at halftime. Contrary to uh, what you might believe, Coach Gibbs did not sing the national anthem. That was a recording, but I hear he has an unbelievable voice. We'll find out at halftime here on the highlight guy. Gerton, as we mentioned, enters tonight's game at 1-1. One one. This is a Londonderry team that is 3-0. Oh. They will both have uh, some holiday tournament games upcoming, but much to do here tonight as these count in the standings, the holiday tournament games. Not so much. Jump ball in the middle. It looks like it's going to be Drapo jumping off against the aforementioned Samantha Sullivan. 
As we mentioned, Sullivan had a great article about her in the uh, Union Leader today. Oh, and a uh, little earring snafu. Steve, did you take your earrings out before putting on your headphones tonight? He did. Okay, so Steve Cody, earrings out. We won't talk about that uh, debacle of uh, 2020 when you forgot to take them out. Remember that? Boy, oh, boy. We won't go there. We have our uh, Colleen from Cornwall prediction coming up here. We'll talk a little bit about that at the end of the period. Eight minutes, girls, high school basketball here in the state of New Hampshire. There is no shot clock. And we are underway. Sullivan tips it long, and getting it there is Bishop Girton. They'll set up in the half court. This is long, looking for help. Nobody underneath taking a dribble. It was contested. That foul is going to go against Sullivan, and a chance for a three-point play the old-fashioned way for Girton. A little bit of miscommunication there underneath as somebody was left uncovered. Acoustic shadows here in the Londonderry gym as Fayed can't complete the three-point play. And back the other way come the Lancers. This is Anderson now, marked up closely by Regan. Gets it to Sullivan on the baseline. Left-hand dribble into the paint. Spin move, right hand up. No. Getting the rebound there in the paint in the land of the Giants was Anderson. Fired from way downtown. May as well have been a pass as the up and under by Gemma Murray. And we are locked up at two. Quickly the other way come the Cardinals. They'll once again slow down and set up in the half court as Long will bring it around. Foul line extended is Regan. She backs it up. They're going to call for a double dribble, travel, take your pick, whatever that call was. Inbounding the ball here is Sloper to do the honors. Cards will extend that full court. Player to player defense all the way. This is Reagan now marking up Anderson. Top of the key, penetrate, went off some feet. Cardinals will try to run, it bounced off some legs. The Cards do not have the numbers. We'll see what Drapo does. Into the corner it goes. Cards kicking it around, dribble drive, kick out, penetrate. And now they'll set up once again, methodical. They'll show some patience. One, two dribbles and now long, back at the right side, top of the key. Losing the dribble in the corner. There's some length there. Finding yourself in no man's land. Kick out. Drapo's not shy. Misses everything. Rebound Fayette. Battled for there. And back the other way comes Anderson. Lancers will run. Skip pass across the way. Was deflected. Intercepted by Dufo. And here she comes down the right side. Little hesitation. Back up top to Long. Long now will penetrate. Nope. Dribble back the other way. Reverse the action. High post set there. And a timeout of the short variety called by Coach Orlando, not liking what she's seeing here in the early going in terms of the offensive continuity. And that's a good timeout for a young team. Anytime you don't like the flow of the offense when there's no shot clock, a good opportunity for you to slow things down and teach. And as we mentioned, this is a young Bishop Girton team. There's nobody on the floor right now that is part of the, those defending two-time state champions. Now, uh, a couple of the girls dressed and, and, and saw some action in varsity games, but uh, they were not the core. The core is gone, and this is a young freshman, sophomore group. Meanwhile, this Londonderry team, again, a young group in their own right, but a year older. A lot of these girls played on that Lancer team a year ago for Coach Doherty. In the corner goes Fayed. Bounce pass, Drapo could have uh, driven the lane there, decided not to. That's a high dribble, but the referee, and I said it, kept the hand above the ball. Stolen there, back the other way goes Murray. Murray up with the left hand, and misses. But she's going to head to the line as Maddie Long is going to pick up her first personal foul. And as a result, Murray's going to go to the line for two. We'll talk about the new foul rules here in the National Federation of High Schools. And Murray's Rainmaker is good. Three to two, Lancers. She'll get a second. Two out of two for the freshman guard, Murray. And the Lancers have doubled up the cards four to two. 5.49 to go here in the first frame. Nice job underneath in the paint. Dribble drive, 
slid around the front of the rim, clearing the glass there was Anderson. She'll run. Sullivan had the body and the positioning, and she'll get a two. Fayed now. Cards trying to get up and down the floor, maybe try to expose the length of the Londonderry bench. And there's a lid on top of the hoop right now. And I think they're going to call Drapo for the foul. And that is the case. That'll be uh, Drapo's first. Good segue into the new foul rule. You get five, you go to the line, and they reset at the end of every quarter. And when you go to the line, it's two. The one and one is done. They're going to say Sullivan was out of bounds. Toe touching there. Couldn't walk that tightrope. Maddie Long going to do the honors. Lancers will fall back beyond the half court. They'll pick up at the half court. And we'll see if some of those changes that Coach Orlando employed will be set into motion here. Double high post. Fayed will flash across. Nice runner in the lane. And a pretty move there by Drapo. She's in the books. Dribble penetrate thrown up there. And I'm not sure if uh, they're going to call. Uh, and it's going to be, I think, the second foul. It'll be the first foul, rather, on uh, Dufo. And it was on the floor. So not in the shoot, shooting motion. Steal there by Fayed. Quickly gets the ball around. And they're going to say push out of bounds. So and they're calling that foul, I think, on Kate Sloper, number 10. And that's her first. I've got two team fouls thus far for Londonary. Three against Girton. Magic number is five. Not shy, way downtown, in and out, follow. Drapo could have come down with it, but went straight up. We're going to get a jump ball call. So Dufo, not shy at taking that shot from way downtown. Drapo grabbed the board with her Windex and unable to put it in. And back the other way come the Lancers. Sullivan, left hand dribble, crossover. Hands it off, dribble penetrate. Nice little three player weave here. All we're missing is the Globetrotter music. Ball's on the floor and so are three bodies and good hustle there by the Cardinals as they come away with it. And you won't see that in the scorebook, but anytime you can go one on three on the floor and come away with it, that's a good thing for your team. So another foul called and that'll be the second personal foul against Sloper. And we're still just in the first quarter. Each team with three team fouls. As we mentioned, five is the magic number. Five will put you at the line for a pair of free throws. Drapo now looking for some help. Kick pass out to the right. That was Long. Long using the left hand. Now back to the right hand. She'll go baseline. There's nobody there. It was blocked off. And going to step out of bounds. So a turnover for the Cardinals. Londonderry will get possession. Cards will extend full court. Long arm by long. And we have a timeout called of the short variety by Coach Doherty. They'll get together and talk it over. 3.48 to go. The Lancers a 6-4 to four advantage over the Bishop Girton Cardinals. So what have we seen so far? These teams both try to feel each other out a little bit. And uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, with three fouls on each team and 3.48 to go. Got to move your feet, and that's probably the discussion that's happening in both of these huddles right now. Can't afford to send the other team to the line for freebies. The London Dairy team that will uh, play their next regular season game on January 5th at Keene. So that's always a fun bus ride. The home of the Blackbirds. And this uh, Girton team will host Pinkerton on the 5th at 6.30. A lot will happen between now and then, however. Nice pass down low on the baseline and unselfish play. Dribble drive, penetrate in the lane. Pretty runner there by Gemma Murray. And she has six of the eight Lancer points. 
High post now, elbow extended, Fayette goes, and maybe a LeBlanc shot there. And they're gonna call Fayette on the foul. And that's gonna be, I believe it's Fayette, her first personal. Little stack alignment here at the elbow. We'll see how Londonderry tries to break it. They get it in the middle to Sullivan and she'll do the honors. Bringing it up over half court, guarded closely there by Drapo, nice crossover move. Oh, and an offensive foul is, that's a tough call on Brooke Ekrit as she started to take a dribble towards the hoop and took a step back, but that left forearm just kind of went out a little bit. The official had a good view of it. It wasn't a very deliberate push, but it was definitely there. And uh, now four team fouls on both the cards and the Lancers. Back to the elbow. This is Drapo, top of the key, looking for some movement. Cards a little stagnant in the half court. Backdoor cut, nice recognition on the double team from the outside. Off the backboard, no, one and done. Back the other way come Murray and the Lancers. Pass underneath, the runner. Good penetration by Anderson. She kicked it out. Baseline drive. Pretty move by Ekrit. And she is in the books. 10-4, good buddy. Back the other way come the cards. Reagan lost the handle. Luckily, Rosario was there. Rosario getting her first action here on the evening. Drapo back over to Long. Long in the corner now. Cards trying to set it up. This is Dufo. Baseline was blocked off. She loses her dribble. Skip pass across the way. Cards very fortunate. Drapo's not shy. Back iron, no. Rebound goes to Murray. And the Lancers will run. Sullivan, it went off somebody's foot. Don't know if either official saw it. Fans in the stands here did. Londonderry ball. Ten four. Lancer advantage. Two minutes to go. Two oh one to be exact. Up top, it goes to Anderson on the low block. No three-second call, up and under, and that's going to be a foul on Drapo. She will pick up her second personal. But more importantly, that's five team fouls against the card. So any foul from here on out in the first quarter will send the Lancers to the free throw line. Knocking down the first is Sullivan. She has three points. She'll get a second, another substitute. Drapo will check out. Fayed will come in for her. Acoustic shadows here in the gym. If you don't know what it is, look it up. You history buffs out there probably know what they are. And if you've watched the highlight guy before, you know what acoustic shadows are. And all my new friends tonight watching in Londonderry and around the globe, look it up. Cocktail trivia, if you will. Rosario gets the ball back up top to Long. Long kicks it out back to Rosario. A little two-player game. There's a nice pick away from the ball, but the pass came a little late. Long swings it over. Back to Fayed. Fayed back to Long. Long back to Rosario. Rosario gets the pick on ball and rolls to the hoop. The runner about the left is no good, and the... Cards getting killed on the boards. Back the other way comes Sullivan with a left-hand dribble, and she'll have a chance for a three-point play the old-fashioned way. So Sullivan will head to the line. Chance to notch her sixth point here. In and out. Someone take the lid off of that hoop. Back the other way come the cards. Ball nearly stolen. Regan was lucky to come away with it. She'll kick it back out. Fired from way downtown. No. And so both of these teams that experienced some good three-point shooting, they each had eight or nine in the first half of their last game. Finding the sledding tough from the outside, primarily because both of these teams play defense, and they're not going to give up anything beyond the arc. Inbound pass, they find Sullivan. Sullivan now, right hand dribble, marked up closely there by Fayed. Crossover, top of the key, penetrate. 
and a nice job of recognizing that double team coming as Reagan Anderson all alone on the low block. Good recognition there by Sullivan, keeping her head up on the dribble penetrate. Left hand dribble now by Jazz. Jazz right hand dribble. She'll try to penetrate the elbow, got stuck. You're gonna call her on the travel. And at this point, I think what you're seeing is a team that is a little bit stronger, a little bit older. We can relate to that, right, Steve? Uh, that, that is a little bit more seasoned, if you will. And Coach Orlando talked about being a seasoned team, and it takes some time to do that, especially when you're so young. Oh, pretty behind the back move there. The runner in the lane with the right is up and in. And that is a highlight real shot right there. 10 seconds to go, 17-4. Lancers on top into the corner. They thought about it. They're trying to skip that pass, and the Lancers have very quick hands. Two seconds, one. Got to shoot it. No good if it goes, but it would have been cool looking. So we'll come to the end of the first quarter, and your score just like that. The Lancers 17 and the Cardinals four. So what have we seen here? Experience is the best teacher, and what we have is a Lancer team that is dominating on the boards. They also have that quick first step offensively. They get to the baseline, they find the open teammate when the double team comes, and they're making some easy shots. Dribble penetrate, nice makes, good defense, good defensive pressure, creating turnovers, moving their feet, cutting off the baseline. And uh, this is a team that, once again, when you talk about the top four teams in the state of New Hampshire right now, this is a Londonderry team that is in that conversation. We've discussed Pinkerton. We've talked about Londonderry. Uh, we've talked about Portsmouth, who played this Londonderry team real tough uh, uh, just a week ago or less than a week ago here. Uh, certainly, this is a, a, a team that will be formidable in the second season. And I know I sound like a broken record, but this is a Girton team that's Come tournament time is not going to look the same either. But uh, obviously we'll talk to uh, Coach Gibbs at halftime and get his take on the state of uh, girls basketball here in the state of New Hampshire. We'll talk about his Bedford Bulldogs who are on that short list of teams who intend to compete for a state championship. Coach Orlando breaking the huddle a little late. A few extra instructions for her lady cards. Eight minutes back up on the clock. And the fouls, as you'll notice on the scoreboard, will reset. So neither team with any fouls here from the standpoint of heading to the charity stripe. Defense extended out and just having all kinds of trouble with the passes fired up and a good opportunity there for Murray. And she's going to head back to the line for two. So the, the uh, foul situation is uh, rearing its ugly head here as uh, picking up her first foul, or excuse me, her second foul is Maddie Long. Long will have to be very careful here. Very tame crowd here in the land of the Lancers. Usually Steve Cody paints his face, runs out on the court, does some gymnastics, gets this place fired up, but still early in the season here yet. They don't know you well enough, Steve. We've got a conversation going on at half court. And uh, they're checking the book here to make sure the numbers were correct. And if they are not, The referees will have a discussion. This could result in a uh, technical free throw. Yeah, the fan in the stand. Uh, balcony Muppets are here, but not loud yet. And so it is a technical foul. And uh, doing the honors is Ekrit. Ekrit gets the home roll, friendly roll, and that's her third point. Lead extended to 18 to four. Two out of two and possession. So the official book is the Londonderry book and if there was a discrepancy there, well, they had to fix it, but it'll cost them two. Utah, give me two. That is a uh, movie reference. Let's see if you know who. 
The runner in the lane, left hand is no good. Another offensive rebound by Anderson. Kick out, fire, air ball. That ball will go out of bounds and the cards will get possession. Drapo will check in and Dufo will head out. And Drapo will have to be careful with those two personal fouls. Maddie Long also with two. Cards now. Playing against a looser man-to-man -man defense. Nice pick away from the ball. Trying to find Drapo on the slash. No, back up top it goes. Now Long on the baseline. Long spinning, dribble, get it back up top. Dribble penetrate, runner in the lane is no good. Back the other way come the Lancers. That ball nearly lost. On the floor it goes. Hands are grabbing at one another. We'll get a jump ball call. Possession will go to the Lancers. Up top now. On the low block. Left hand dribble. Spin move. Glass. Kiss too hard. And back the other way come the cards. And just ball hawking everywhere, these Lancers. They have quick hands, and the cards are finding themselves stuck down in the corners. Drapo now, looking for some help, gets it out to Long. And now the cards slowing it down. Fayed now, up top, Drapo. And no one is moving here, a little stagnant on the offense. Now they'll kick it around on the perimeter. Once again, no shot clock here in the state of New Hampshire, so it can take as long as you need. Oh, would have been good to go back door there, decided not to. Gonna get a jump ball. Possession will go to the cards, but again, just great defenses. Checking in for the Lancers is number 10, Kate Sloper. And heading to the bench is Mia Giampa. That ball gets knocked out of bounds, and I think that the discrepancy and checking with uh, my, my counterparts at New Hampshire Sports page, number 22 is Philbrick, I believe. Uh, that would be my best guess. Um, we've had some number discrepancies in the first three games, and I believe that is uh, Philbrick, who wore number four in the last game. Ball kicked around up top. Drapo now, right hand dribble. Finds Philbrick, Philbrick left hand dribble in the paint. One, two, up, no good. And it was a good look by Philbrick, but just couldn't kiss it off the glass. Sullivan now had the baseline cut off, gets it back up top. Lancers will move it around. Baseline goes off of a Cardinal midsection and coming the other way is Philbrick finds Drapo up. No, no call back the other way. Drapo wanted the slap call, didn't get it. It's a little jump stop, kiss off glass, Reagan Anderson. She has her fourth point. 21 to four now, Lancers. Long will bring it back out, try to get the offensive sets moving. The cards have no answer for this man-to-man uh, -man defense being employed. Another steal back the other way comes Ekrit. Ekrit up with the left, can't get it to go, but it's gonna be another foul called on Long, and that's gonna be her third. So the Lancers making their second home at the free throw line here in the first half as Egret will head to the line for a pair. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Egret misses the first, she'll get a second. One out of two for the sophomore guard. And back the other way come the cards, trying to get Notch their fifth point here with 4.30 to go in the first half. Finding the sledding tough. Crossover dribble. Jazz now will pull things back. Drapo 
flashes, and that's going to go off of Fayed's hands. And uh, just a young team trying to figure things out here, and it's it's a work in progress, especially when you're playing against arguably one of the top four teams in the state. Slow and methodical as Ekrit gets a pick on ball, will drive, crossover, foul line extended, kick out. Nice ball fake by Murray, she went up, hit nothing. Dufo got that rebound, was harassed, and the numbers three on two, nice kick out drive, Fayed, ball fake. And the Lancers just getting back in the transition defense, cutting off the lane, not allowing the cards to penetrate. Nice crossover dribble there, and that time, as I said it, Ekrit may have gotten a, beaten by half a step, and she reached in. So that'll be her second personal. Just the first team foul of the second quarter for the Lancers. Two against the Cards. Jazz inbounds the ball to Drapo. Drapo gets it up. Nice crossover dribble, little one-on-one -on -one game. Goes up with the left and can't get the make. It was a good look for Dufo. She just couldn't put it home. And a travel call there as Anderson had the ball, kind of floated through the air and maybe took that extra half a step. Back the other way come the cards. Reagan now. High dribble finds Fayed, will drive the lane. There's contact, no call. And in for the sixth point, Fayed, and she has four of those six. Lancers now content to kind of slow things down and operate in the half court. And as I say that, Sloper drives the lane too hard off the glass, but she gets hacked in the act. And she'll try to join the scoring column. As uh, that's going to be, looks like Fayed's third personal. Nice shot there by Gemma Murray. She's perfect so far from the line as Fayed will take a seat on the bench. 2 for 2 on that trip. Has 8 points does Murray. And now the cards operate with 250 to go and counting. Jazz was thinking baseline was cut off there. They'll work the ball around the perimeter and that'll go off a leg. We'll see who it went off of. It's going to be green ball. And uh, it seems as though Regan knew that. And if she thought it went off of her, a pretty heads up play to bait the official. You can watch the replay back on the highlight guy. Full timeout called by the cards. Jason Roby here along with the highlight guy, Steve Cody. He is the man on the moving pictures. You can watch the highlight guy on YouTube. You can also watch it live on the website, the highlight guy. All of your basketball needs here in the state of New Hampshire, all things Division I girls basketball. Steve and I will be heading uh, across the border into Draket, Massachusetts for the Draket Holiday Tournament. And that should be a good one. See some of the Massachusetts powerhouses. We followed that Draket team all the way to the uh, state title game at the University of Massachusetts Lowell a year ago. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring you one of these Bishop Girton games on the 28th. We'll try to get that game on for you. We'll check our traveling schedule. Want to say hello to all of our guys and gals down in the uh, production truck. Steve, Ken, Jennifer, Mark, Alex, great job out there. All our people work in the satellite truck. That would be uh, Peter, Paul, John, Ringo. <laughs> Some of the Beatles, I don't know, there we go. All right, back the other way come the cards. Gotta have fun with this, Steve. It's like no room for cardboard up here. Drapo kicks it back over. Regan, and just telegraph that one as Ekrit comes, oh, a little leather souffle! Out of my kitchen, says Regan.
But again, we're, we're cheering on that, but it was a, a, a pass that was not with the zip that we're used to seeing, and they're just stepping into those passing lanes. This is Sullivan on the low block goes up, and she was definitely hacked on that one. And uh, that's going to go against Drapo. I think that's going to be her third. Sullivan going to head to the line for a pair. Sullivan thus far with five points. Knocks down the first on a line drive. 25 to six Lancers. Two out of two for the sophomore forward, Samantha Sullivan. She's three out of five on the evening from the free throw line. Seven total points. Good balance scoring here by the Lancers. Runner in the lane, no call there. It was a good look by Dufo, but she couldn't get it to go. And it's another one and done as the Lancers are owning the glass. Call 1-800-54-GIANT. The Lancers will answer that call. Reverse, no. And pulled away. I think we're going to get a jump ball. We are, and it's going to stay with the Lancers. Remember that commercial, Steve? 1-800-54-GIANT. All right. <laughs> you can all sing along at home. You guys all singing Christmas carols and holiday songs. We're singing uh, replacement windshield glass songs up here. So timeout called with 1.37 to go in the first half. A 20-point Lancer advantage. And definitely not the start that Coach Orlando wanted for her young Bishop Girton team. But as we knew, it would be a work in progress. It would be something that would take time. And uh, this Lancer team has uh, eyes on a place they want to get to later on in the season here, and they are playing like it. As we mentioned, this Londonderry team, along with Portsmouth and Bedford and Pinkerton, and you can't overlook Steve Largie's Goffstown Grizzlies, who we saw in uh, the first game of the season. They got to be mentioned in that top four or five teams. Inbounding the ball underneath the hoop. Nice pass inbounded to Ekrit. Ekrit now got the ball over, Sloper, and now a little four-player weave. That was Murray, and they just keep going around. Sullivan, and now that ball gets stolen. Good transition defense, and that one is going to go off the hands of Dufo. So the one thing you're seeing here is when the Lancers turn the ball over, they get on their Pontiac and ride. They get back on the transition defense. Full court pressure applied here. Got to be careful there not to pick up a foul as uh, reaching over the top was Gallagher. Maggie's in her first action here in the game tonight. Crossover dribble, a nice one. Runner by Sullivan, no. Goes up with the right hand to get the board. And they're going to call jump ball. Possession going to go to the Cardinals. Once again, the Lancers will fall back behind half court and pick up. Once the ball gets past the jousting figure. That was quite a sport, huh, Steve? Jousting, remember that? The runner in the lane, no good, but we're going to get a foul called, and that is going to send Gallagher to the line. And it's going to be a call against number 20. That will be Gemma Murray's first personal. Just two on the team here. Pretty shot there. I feel so guilty talking when people are getting ready to shoot a free throw. It's like a golf match. There's a definite different type of etiquette. Front iron, no. Rebound goes to the Lancers. One out of two for Gallagher. She's in the books. 26 to 7, 45 seconds to go here in the first half. Anderson now finds Sullivan down on the baseline. She'll penetrate to the elbow, kicked out. No travel call, runner in the lane is up and good. Friendly hometown roll for Sloper and she's in the books. 24 seconds in counting now, Jazz. Elbow extended, spin move, kick out. Nice penetrate and they're gonna call a blocking foul as Gallagher drove the lane, found herself underneath the hoop, so very fortunate there.
And uh, that foul will go against Ekrit. That's her third personal foul. She'll head to the bench. And checking in for the Lancers, I believe that's Mia Giampa. It goes over the top. Giampa with the long arm, and there's the difference. They are just anticipating where those passes are going. They could bring the ball back over the uh, half court line and set up, though. So this is Jazz now getting the ball up top. They'll work it around. Drapo back to Jazz. Jazz left hand dribble, elbow. She'll shoot it, and no good. So. One half is in the books here from the campus of Londonderry High School. Your score at the half, it's the Lancers 28, the Cardinals 7. You are watching basketball action, Division I girls here in the state of New Hampshire on the Highlight Guy. We'll be right back in just a minute with our halftime guest, the head coach of the Bedford Bulldogs, Coach Kevin Gibbs. We'll be back in just a minute. Are you looking to play sports in college? Almost every college recruiting website recommends having a highlight video as one of the top three crucial recruiting tools. In fact, 93% of college coaches we surveyed said they watch a recruit's highlight video as part of their player assessments. Our sole purpose is to make you look good. Our highlight videos include an athlete bio and accolade page, stop motion, and player highlight. The video is not done until you are completely satisfied and say it's done. We also upload to YouTube or whatever recruiting platform you use. The Highlight Guide can also film your high school or club games to capture you in action resulting in amazing footage that you can use to help create your highlight video. We have the expertise to help you get recruited. Check out our website at thehighlightguide.com or contact Steve at thehighlightguide.com to get started on your path to playing sports in college. Hi, my name is Deb Cody and I'm a realtor with Keller Williams Coastal and Lakes and Mountains Realty. I serve both residential and commercial clients in New Hampshire and Maine and work with an amazing team of KW colleagues and affiliate partners to help you achieve your real estate goals. In 2022, I ranked in the top 20% of 700 plus agents within my brokerage. I was nominated this past year to serve on the agent leadership committee within my firm and have enjoyed giving back to my colleagues and local community. Are you curious to know how much your home may be worth in today's market? Reach out to me today and I'd be happy to run a complimentary comparative market analysis for you. Welcome back, everybody, to the campus of Londonderry High School here in Londonderry, New Hampshire, home of the Lancers. Jason Roby on the play-by-play -play and color commentary. Steve Cody is the man on the moving pictures. He is the highlight guy. And I am joined here at halftime by Bedford High School head coach uh, Kevin Gibbs. And, Coach, uh, your thoughts on this one so far here tonight? You, you, you've seen a, a Londonderry team that's uh, come out here flexing their muscle a little bit and a young Girton team. What are your takeaways from that first half of action? Well, not, not unexpected, only from the perspective that uh, Bishop Girton is an entirely new team. New coach, new players, everybody from last year is gone. Um, for the most part, uh, not even sure if any JV kids moved up, but this really is a fresh start for Coach Orlando and the Cardinals. Um, and it's going to kind of be trial by fire this year. I yeah. mean, they, a lot of these kids a year ago were playing middle school ball and now they're playing against in many cases adult women right and uh you know as the old saying goes you know this isn't uh this isn't your grandma's basketball uh, this is an aau it's high school ball where many times it's a chess match and both coaches do a really good job in preparing their teams but at this point londonderry is a little more battle tested or i should say their players are more battle tested over the last year or two and that's showing on the floor. Their their defensive pressure is 
intense. And at this point, Bishop Girton is having a hard time responding to that. Yeah, I think that's that's a pretty good uh, synopsis of what we've seen so far. And you mentioned the fact this is a team that's a little longer in the tooth than Londonderry. Been here, done that. A Bishop Girton team that just the speed of the game, they haven't quite caught up to that high school speed yet. And you're noticing that they're stepping in the passing lane, stealing balls that you know they wouldn't be stealing a year ago against a more seasoned team. So exactly, exactly. And and you know, truthfully, um, the the. The kids at BG need to trust the process. Um, Coach Orlando has got great plans for them. And New Hampshire girls basketball is better the more teams there are out there that are strong and competitive. Right. Right. And um, I fully expect that we'll see Bishop Girton back at some point, um, but probably not this year. Right. The schedule that they're facing is, is very, very daunting. Uh, they're out of state games. They retained four of those against four really good teams and then they picked up because they CCA Conquer Christian made the move from D3 to D2 and in their quest to build a schedule and Bishop Girton's quest to build a schedule they scheduled a home and away and CCA is a good team so I mean it's going to be trial by fire this year sure going to be trial by fire let's uh let's parlay that into speaking of good competition uh you are no stranger to having a, a good team yourself and being a uh, one of those teams that's been in the finals each of the last few years here, winning it a couple of years ago, three years ago, and being uh, down to the wire against the, the Girton team the last two years. Your team, one of the odds on favorites to uh, get back to UNH at the end of the year to try to hoist another banner. What can you tell us about your team early this early in the season? We're good. Yep. Not going to deny that. Sure. We're good. Um, we haven't really been tested yet. And I know we're going to talk a little bit about the, the yeah. holiday tournament in a moment, but uh, we purposely brought in some strong opponents for the holiday tournament for the kids to get sharpened so that when we do play Londonderry, Pinkerton, Portsmouth, um, we'll be able to compete, if you will, right. at a higher level. Um, you know, mostly at this point, uh, the matchups have been somewhat uneven, and we've been focused more on game to game goals. Uh, in-game goals that aren't related to points. Sure. They're related more to defense, rebounding, uh, deflections, limiting our turnovers, uh, creating turnovers in the opponent. Um, big emphasis on assists, on, on sharing the ball, uh, to the point where in the girls' team room, we have a board of season goals that they created themselves in, a, in an exercise that we do. But then we also have a game-to-game -game goal set where we have eight different categories, and that's what the girls are focusing on for each game. Um, wins will come if we do those things successfully. Sure. And it keeps them focused in the moment, even when there's a, a big point spread going on on the floor. And that makes a lot of sense. I mean, having in-game goals, having goals other than points scored, uh, really keep things fresh and focused for your team. And it seems like if you check those boxes off, it really doesn't matter who you're playing, you should be able to take care of business. That was well said. Talk to me a little bit about uh, that uh, holiday tournament you're going to be in. You mentioned playing some of the upper echelon programs and uh, and who you're going to see and what what's that going to do for your program? Well, uh, as you may know, uh, a couple of years ago, Pinkerton, Bedford, and Londonderry all of a sudden found themselves with no place to play. Right. Um, and the three of us, John, Lanny, and myself, decided let's, let's try to put something together. Mm. So we went out found some teams to play uh, we had some good response from Maine but Maine has a very unusual rule where teams can't play three days in a row in um, in special events so um, long and the short of it we brought some teams in last year uh, the games were somewhat lopsided and most of the teams did not want to come back uh, sure. most notably Haldale who's the uh, twice reigning class C champion in Maine said they definitely wanted to come back and frankly they gave us the best game of the of the tournament and John said, I'll take care of the logistics here at Londonderry. Go find some, some good opposition. And so I went after it and came up with, with a pretty good field. Uh, we brought in the two best teams from Rhode Island, LaSalle Academy, sure. who Bishop Girton plays each yes. year, as well as Barrington, Rhode Island, uh, who was the preseason number one favorite in Rhode Island. And then um, the real uh, whale that we landed is Bishop Fian. Um, yep. who last year made it to the state finals and lost to Andover in Mass. And then uh, this year is the odds-on favorite to repeat. And what I love most is that these games count for those out-of-state teams in their power rankings and their end-of-the-season um, 
record. So they're going to bring it. They're not going to be treating these as exhibition games, and that's what we want. That's what we need in order for us to be prepared for what will be some pretty competitive games after the first of and, the year. And that was my next question. Is that like an iron, sharpen iron kind of thing where you may not come out on top or, or, or you may kind of be in a close one, but that kind of battle testing gets you ready for that second season here in New Hampshire? B building, building fortitude, and, uh, you know, we've been able to, to work our, our bench deeply in a lot of these, these wide margin games. But we also want to make sure that everybody is prepared in the really tough battles that we get. And as we all know, once you get to everybody being 0 and 0 at the end of the season, um, every game's a tough one. Absolutely. Well, Coach Gibbs, uh, we've enjoyed covering your games each of uh, the last three or four years here on the Highlight Guy. Always loves seeing you in the postseason. Know we're going to see some of the best girls in all of New England playing in those games. And uh, really appreciate you coming uh, here to talk to us here on the Highlight Guy. Wish you the best of luck in that holiday tournament. Know you'll make New Hampshire proud and obviously wishing you best of luck here in the state of New Hampshire. He is Coach Kevin Gibbs. And some of our guests here on the Highlight Guy at halftime will receive a $5 gift card to Starbucks. Coach, uh, you are one of those gifts. I thank Merry you. Merry Christmas. This Happy New Year. Don't spend it all in one place. Well, I will try to. not to. I will try not to. Thank you so much. He's Kevin Gibbs, the head coach of the Bedford Bulldogs, and we are ready for second half action here from the campus of Londonderry High School. Jason Roby calling the action for you along with Steve Cody, the highlight guy on the moving pictures. Coach Gibbs, nice to join us here, and uh, he has one of the premier programs in the state of New Hampshire, and they'll get an opportunity to showcase what they have uh, in that holiday tournament against some pretty good competition. Meanwhile, Londonderry starting things off where they left off as a, a nice little jumper there in the corner that looked to be Ekrit. Cards now going the other way, left to right on your dial. Gets the ball over to Aorio. Dribble drive, up, shot is blocked out of bounds. That was Gallagher, uh, my mistake on the number call there. Juggling chainsaws up here, Steve. Ball gets sent out to beyond the arc to Gallagher. She'll set things up in the half court. Marked up closely by Sullivan. Sullivan with the quick hands and able to reestablish her dribble because of those quick hands was Gallagher and she'll head to the line for a pair. That foul is going to go against Londonderry and uh, Samantha Sullivan. That's her second personal foul. Knocking down the first is Gallagher. She is two out of three so far here on the evening. And if you are Coach Orlando, two out of two for Gallagher, the cards will extend the pressure. If you're Coach Orlando, the, the uh, word to your team is probably, let's try to win the quarter. Straight up, and a pretty make there by Ekrit. She's on fire to start the second half, but try to win the quarter to stay in this one. You may not be able to catch this Londonderry team as uh, the ball is stolen, and this is Sloper coming back the other way, finding Murray in the paint. Murray goes up. And we'll get hacked in the act. And she will head to the line for a pair of free throws. You may not be able to catch this team, but if you can try to reset the score and try to win the third quarter, that's a good goal. Meanwhile, if you're this, this Lancer team, you saw a Portsmouth team come back from way down in the fourth quarter. And uh, I'm sure this is a, a team uh, that Coach Doherty is going to keep his foot on the gas pedal. Murray, Rainmaker, back iron, no, but look that. Hustling to try to keep the ball in play was Murray. Her toe was on the line, so the cards will get possession. 6.52 to go here in the third quarter, 33-9. to Lancers over the cards. Jazz got the ball up to Reagan. Reagan back over to Rosario. Rosario now right-hand crossover. They're trying to force her left. Pizzetti getting her first action, has her pocket picked, and back the other way come the Lancers. Unselfish ball, gets kicked around in the corner. Coming away with it is Anderson. Skip pass across the lower half of the lane. Fired from the outside. No, it was a good look, but another offensive board outside. Air ball, and they're going to say that one off the hand of Ekrit. 
Lancers will fall back. You are watching on The Highlight Guy. You can catch us on YouTube. You can catch it on thehighlightguy.com. You'll probably want to watch it back over the holidays. I know that's what I'll be doing, Steve. Runner in the lane, up, and a pretty shot there by Jazz Rosario. She's in the books. Oh, they leave the baseline wide open. Bad rotation by the Cards. Very fortunate as a miss layup. Cards able to grab the rebound, reverse the floor, and attack. Rosario stops the dribble, kicks it back out on the perimeter. Quick hands again, and the Lancers come away with it. That was Sloper poking it away. Murray now loses the dribble, able to kick it across and find Sloper. Sloper looking for a streaking Sullivan. She goes up strong with it and gets hacked in the act. That one will go against Gallagher. And that'll be Maggie's first personal, I believe. It is indeed. Sullivan will head to the line for a pair of freebies. Knocks down the first. Checking into the game is Jampa. And Anderson will get a break. Back iron, no, one out of two. Pizzetti comes away with that rebound. She'll right hand dribble kick out there to Long. Long finding Fayed, who's denied the paint. Rosario will reverse course. Left hand dribble finds Fayed. Fayed at the elbow, and she's going to get called for the player controlled foul. A little push off there, and that's going to be Bella's fourth personal. Checking in for Fayed is Drapo. She has three fouls of her own. Sullivan gets the ball back over to Sloper. Little two-player game there. Here comes the trap. They find her, but no one is playing uh, Sloper at midcourt. Little dribble drive, penetrate, can't get it to go. Nice rebound there by Drapo. Jazz, left-hand dribble, drives baseline, picked up closely there by Sloper. The ball will come up top to Drapo. Good quick hands once again by the Lancers, and that turnover sheet is not going to be a pretty thing to look at tomorrow morning. Up and under, found herself too deep in the penetration. Jampa kissed it off the underside of the rim. Back the other way come the cards. Jazz, no. And the three-point shooting is being contested. Not a three-pointer for either team here this evening. Long. Almost stolen there. Pizzetti was able to come away with it. Left-hand dribble well beyond the arc. Back to the basket. Jazz now. Dribble drive. Pull-up jumper. Lefty. No. It's a little lefty in the lane and kind of pulled up short on it. Back the other way come the Lancers. Little pull-up jumper of her own. Sullivan went over the top to grab that board. Had the height advantage. Got hacked in the act. She'll head back to the line for a pair of free throws. That foul is going to go against Gallagher. That's her second. That's the team's fourth. <laughs> Sullivan knocks down the first. Dufo will come in for the cards. Anderson will come back in for the Lancers. Sloper will have a seat on the Lancer bench, and Jazz Rosario will get a rest for the cards. One out of two for Sullivan back the other way. Come the cards, that, again that lane is cut off and Long has to regroup. Looking for a backdoor cut, harassed there by Sullivan creating that turnover. Nice bounce pass to Sullivan, goes up strong, no. And bumped off of the ball there was Dufo, but the ball will go off of a Lancer. 3.29 to go here, 35 to 11. Lancers. Left hand dribble in the paint. Nice little runner with the left. Pretty move by Gallagher. And she has five points leading all. Girton scores up and under the good transition play there by the Lancers as Ekrit tried for a little reversal. It was no good. She'll head to the line. Why 
I'll have to come back into the paint. And that one is an air ball on the first one, but she'll get a second. So basket was good, one out of two for Ekrit. Back the other way comes Pizzetti. Pass up top to Drapo, they skip it across, ball nearly stolen. Oh, the runner, no foul called, offensive board for the cards, one of the first times they get that. Little stop shot in the paint was no good. Finally crashing the boards is Pizzetti, and she'll get hacked in the act and head to the line. She'll get two free throws. That foul going against number five, Reagan Anderson. That's just her first personal. Release rotation splash for Pozzetti. She'll get a second. Back iron, no. That's going to go off of a Cardinal wing off of Gallagher. So Lancers will get possession and the cards will fall back and pick up at half court. 36-14 now. 22 point advantage for the home team, the Londonderry Lancers looking to move to 4-0 on the young season. Sullivan crossover, pretty move. Elbow, double team, travel called. I never understood how you could travel while you're dribbling, but apparently you can. I have yet to figure that one out. If you have the answer, just email the highlight guy and let him know. Pizzetti, left-hand dribble. The paint clears so she can go one-on-one. -on -one. And that's a great play call there as uh, the cards cleared the paint and Pizzetti went all the way to the hole and not to be outdone. Anything you can do, I can do better. Gemma Murray repeats the process. Her team was uh, off to the left side, clearing the lane. They wanted a travel call there, didn't get it. Gallagher will dribble drive, kick out. Yahtzee! And the first three-pointer made there by Drapo. Crossover dribble, harass there. Cards come away with a steal, and that's Pizzetti. Getting it up over the top. Double team, ball gets stolen from Dufo. Back the other way come the Lancers. And I will say this about that. Pizzetti has been the spark that the Cards have needed. That ball was grabbed, but they're going to say the foul is going to go against... Gallagher, I believe. Not put it on the scoreboard yet, but heading to the free throw line is Murray. And uh, five team fouls, I believe it was on. I'm not quite sure who it was on. Making the first, she'll get a second. Kind of feel like I was in the twilight zone there for a minute. 40 to 19. We've all been there before, haven't we? Happy holidays, everybody. Gallagher gets the ball over to Drapo. Drapo, right hand drive. Good help defense, jump stop. A blocking call is called. Drapo puts it in. Going to get a chance for a three point play the old fashioned way. Basket counts. It was good help defense in the paint, but the blocking call is going to go against Murray. That's her second. Drapo knocks down the first. She'll get a second. Oh, excuse me, that was a three point play. Just seeing who was paying attention out there in TV land. 
Nothing showing on that possession for the Lancers, and the Cards will come in and try to cut into that lead. Pretty move there by Drapo. She'll get hacked in the act, and the Cards are playing a little more aggressive. And I think since Pizzetti has come into the game, she's given a little bit more of a spark. She's a senior. Playing with a little more fire has brought some fire into the game with her. Drapo knocks down the first on that Rainmaker. It'll be Mia Giampa's first personal, just four so far on the Lancers. Drapo two out of two on that trip. She's got 10 to lead all Girton scores, 40 to 24. Runner in the lane, pretty move coming up short. Sullivan getting her own missed shot and goes back up and puts up another one. The Cards have had no answer for Sullivan. She's got 11. Under 15 seconds to go, Drapo. And a nice effort there down on the baseline. Good quick hands by Anderson, knocked out of bounds. So the Cards get another shot here, literally and figuratively. Long gets it into Pizzetti. Pizzetti up top. Dufo, the runner in the lane is no good. It was a good look. Sullivan will have a chance here as she gets over half court. That ball is deflected and no shot, so we'll come to the end of the third quarter and your score, the Londonderry Lancers 42 and the Bishop Girton Cardinals 24. Well, as I said earlier, the objective for this young Cardinal team, see if you can win the quarter, see if you can outscore the Lancers in that third. And uh, they had 17 points in that third quarter, their best quarter by far. And they did just that. So they won the quarter. And that's important when you have a young team. You're trying to find attainable goals. You know, it's very uh, unrealistic to think you can get all those points back in eight minutes. But if you can kind of look at your goal as, okay, we lost that first half. Let's reset that scoreboard and see if we can't win the quarter. And the Cardinals did just that. And we talk about it in baseball all the time as well. Win the inning. Win the inning. Baseball can be a long game, especially if there's a lot of crooked numbers put up. And the way that you encourage kids to keep getting after it is to try and win the inning. And so if you're the uh, Cardinals, you just won that inning. So good for this young team. And you heard Coach Gibbs say it. This is a team that is going to get better as the season progresses. Most of the teams improve leaps and bounds, but I think the most growth that any team can have, of, of all the teams we've seen so far, the team that can grow the most is probably this Cardinal team. Drapo, and she's going to get called for too many steps. And I'll tell you this. When you look at the sideline for Bishop Girton, there's no yelling and screaming and jumping up and down. It's a, it's a young coaching staff uh, letting the kids play, coaching when you can, teaching the entire time and doing it the right way. And that's extremely important. Fire from the outside, no. And getting on the floor, the ball rolls around and we're gonna get a timeout, I believe. It's gonna be a full so a good heads-up call there by Coach Doherty as that ball was rolling around. The Lancers will get possession underneath the hoop. But a 42-24 to 24 ball game, much more respectable than it was looking at halftime when the Cards only had seven points. They had three points in the second quarter, four points, just the four in the first. And uh, it was a good job by that young team. And getting their feet wet, getting the feel, and, and Coach Gibbs actually echoed the same exact thing that we said that first game. This is not AAU ball. This is not travel ball. Uh, this is not everybody is the best player and, and uh, you paid money to play, so therefore it must be true. This is uh, the real deal. This is, you're gonna get in there, you're gonna play with officials, they're gonna call it. The game's gonna be a little bit tougher, a little bit stronger, and 
this Girton team will learn from that. It'll be Lancer Ball. Murray to do the honors from the N and the D and the Londonderry logo. The first N and the D, there's two of them. Up top it comes to Sullivan. Sullivan, right hand dribble, three point line, spin move on Drapo, up, no. And they're gonna say Drapo on the hack. It was actually pretty good defense by Talia. She kept her positioning, but her arms were kind of leaning in a little bit on Sullivan, and that'll be her fourth foul, and Sullivan will head to the line. Misses the first. She'll get a second, not a lot of arc on her free throw. Always fun to watch the different styles of free throw shooters here. And as I say that, knocks down the second with a lot more arc. So one out of two for the sophomore. And we're gonna get an offensive foul call here, I believe. And it's gonna go against Drapo and that's gonna close the book on her. That'll be her fifth personal foul. She'll head to the bench. And again, we reset. So that's the uh, second team foul here in the quarter. Behind the back, Murray running the show, finds Sullivan, Sullivan kicks it out. Sloper, runner on the lane, no good, can get the roll there, but again on the offensive board was Anderson doing the dirty work. Brought her bounty paper towels and her Windex and got on that glass. And she'll head to the line. Nice job knocking down the first. She'll get a second. Reagan will come in and give Dufo a break for the cards. Second free throw for Anderson. Two out of two for the junior guard. Back the other way comes Long. Pizzetti now, left hand dribble. Reverses direction, will take it hard to the hole. No call and puts it in. I'll say it again, Pizzetti is someone I expect to see on the floor a whole lot more as this season progresses. She brings an extra little fire as driving to the hoop there. Answering Pizzetti was Gemma Murray. 47-26. Pizzetti finds a streaking to the hole, Fayed, and a nice job by Fayed going up strong. She'll head to the line for two. That foul is going to go against Sullivan. That's her third personal, the team's first here in the fourth quarter. Fayed, front iron, side iron, no. She'll get a second. And the second one is true. Bella, one out of two on that trip. She has her fifth point. And nice quick hands as uh, Regan steals the ball, comes back the other way. Fayed, hard dribble, sidesteps the defense. Unable to get it to go, but guess who was there? Johnny on the spot, Pizzetti. Pizzetti, nil spin move, pretty dish underneath, and a nice job there by Maddie Long to finish. Ball kicked out, Ekrit, baseline drive, nice kick pass to Anderson, little jumper hits nothing, cards come away with it, it was Pizzetti, but threw it a little bit long, so the Lancers intercept it and come back the other way. Spin move up, no. Getting her own rebound and missing it again, but the cards are getting out rebounded here by this Lancer team. Fortunate there. That's going to go off the hands of a Lancer. Went off of uh, Ekrit. So long to do the honors underneath the hoop. Comes into Gallagher. Gallagher tried to get it to Pizzetti, but the hands were too quick. And back the other way comes Sloper, and she'll finish strong at the other end. Breakaway layup. 
49-29, 20-point advantage for the Lancers. 5-14 to go here in this one. Pezzetti back out to Long. Long into the corner. Nice job of going up strong and finishing is Gallagher. Nice job of ball movement by this young card team and a good finish at the dish. Sloper up top. Dribble drive, no, and a clean block, they said. And back the other way, being harassed all the way was Reagan. That ball is going to go off. I think they're going to say it went off a sloper. So the cards will get possession. Long to inbound the ball. Having trouble getting it in, and they're going to call a timeout. And that time, Coach Orlando was quick to uh, make that call, a shorter variety timeout. Every possession counts here, so you don't want to lose a possession, and Coach Orlando was quick to save that one. 49-31 now. And the cards have hung around here in the second half. They've played the way that... Uh, if they had played this way in the first half, maybe you're looking at a little bit different of a game, but... This Londonderry team got off to a very fast start, has played very good defense. They've created a lot of turnovers here. Uh, they've anticipated where the passes were going in the BG offensive sets. They've dominated the glass, and these are all things that you would expect an older, more experienced team to be able to do, and they're doing it. Ball comes in, under, and nice pass in, and a good finish there by Gallagher. She has nine. Sullivan, runner in the lane, is good. Gets the roll there. A good, strong move by the sophomore. 51-33. Another pass goes over the top. And that one was just a bit too high for Gallagher to come down with. I would venture to say if she was a seven-footer, no problem. Lancers will inbound the ball. Cards now employing their full court pressure. Pizzetti going to harass Murray all the way down the floor. She'll go behind the back. Now she'll dribble drive, penetrate, and has a chance to finish with a three-point play. Nice move by Murray, changing the pace. Step back, got Pizzetti to lunge, went by her, created the contact, finished strong at the hole. Chance for a three-point play for Murray. She knocks it down. Back the other way come the cards. They'll set up their offense. Comes out to Long. Sullivan now marking her up. Kick to the outside, Regan. Baseline, tries to go behind the back. Fortunate to keep the dribble. Long looking underneath, nice backdoor cut there and finish. Good recognition by Long finding Gallagher under the hoop. Running the other way. Don't know if that ball was tipped or not. They say it was Lancer possession, 54-35. Ball comes into Murray. Dished underneath. There was a block there. And they're going to say the bucket is good. I think that's going to go against Fayed. Sullivan with a chance for another three-point play. And that was on Fayed. That is her fifth foul. So she'll exit the game, checking in for the first time tonight. Mac Bowen, number 11, senior. <laughs> Sullivan knocks it down to finish the three-point play. Back the other way, come Long and the Cardinal. She loses her dribble, needs help, finds Sullivan. Sullivan takes a dribble and stops. Nice backdoor cut there to Gallagher. And they're making hay on that backdoor cut. And the aggressiveness being used against the Lancers several times here as Gallagher has eight points in the fourth quarter all on backdoor cuts. 
up strong and two shots coming again. Sullivan will head to the line. Foul goes against Pizzetti. I believe that is her third personal foul as Sullivan knocks down the first. If you're going to mail her a Christmas card, just address it to the foul line at Londonderry High School. It'll get to her. Two out of two for Sullivan. Another backdoor cut. And this time Gallagher couldn't hang on to it. So... The backdoor cut has been uh, something that's worked very well for the Cards here in the fourth quarter. They'll handle the pressure and they'll run and Sullivan outruns them all, misses that one. Cards get the board and will run. Regan now, she'll flash through. Long will work it around. Another cut through the middle, this time to Bowen. She'll put it up and in. And she's in the books. Mac Bowen, so a couple of seniors here providing some spark for this Cardinal team. Fired from way downtown, no. It's underneath, couldn't get it to go. It was a good look. This one gonna go out of bounds, just a bit long. As uh, cherry picking down here was Ekrit. They could not connect on that one. Still a 20-point London and Derry advantage, 59-39, 1.53 to go. Way downtown, no good. Bowen, you're going to take that shot, though. you got to get back on defense. Three on two, fire from the outside, back iron, no. Regan with the board, and she'll run. Good transition defense by the Lancers, crossover. Again on that little flash, and that time the hands of Jampa too quick. And back the other way come the Lancers. Spin move, Sullivan, left hand up, no. Foul's gonna go against Bowen. That'll be her first. And Sullivan will go back to her winter home at the free throw line. In and out, everything but in on that one from Sullivan. She'll get a second shot. I feel like I should be reading the night before Christmas, Steve. It's so quiet in here. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. One out of two for Sullivan on that trip. 60 to 39 now. Phil Brick kicks it out. No, followed her shot, and it's going to go off of her own leg. It was Murray who had visions down the floor. Was it visions of sugar plums dancing in their head? She had visions of a clear path to the basket and went off of her leg. Pizzetti. And they're going to call travel there. As uh, good quick hands again on the penetration. Pizzetti kind of lost the handle. And a couple of more substitutes for the Lancers as uh, checking in is uh, number 30, Nar, Ava Nar. And I believe Talia Iorio also in. So heading to the bench here on this one as. Long three-pointers, no good by Oreo. Back the other way comes Bowen. Bowen, skip pass across the way. Not shy, front iron, no. And Philbrick came crashing on the boards, but it went off of her hands. And the possession arrow, or rather the possession will go to the Lancers. Girton still going to stay in the pressure with 34.9 seconds left. Baseball throw downtown. Coming away with it is Murray. Murray probably just run the clock out here with 25 seconds to go. She'll go between the legs. They'll come back up top. And this one is all but final. 
as uh, they'll run this one out. This is Sloper, got it back down in the corner to Iorio. Back up top now, Murray, left hand dribble, she'll fall back, kicked out into the corner. That one hit Long's hand and then went off of Ekrit. So with six seconds to go, 6.6 .6 to be exact, Cards will get the final possession here. They'll just run it over the half court line. We'll see what Long does. Into the corner, fired, and Yahtzee! So a three-pointer in the books for Pazzetti. She'll finish with eight total. Your final score here from the campus of Londonderry High School, it is the Lancers 60 and the Cardinals 42. Well, when we look at the final statistics, what you're going to see is a whole lot of free throw shooting. This is an SAT test on my scorebook here for the Lancers. Uh, a couple of Cardinals fouling out. And uh, it's a 60-42 to 42 game, an 18-point differential. But let's look at that second half. And I think if you're, you know, there are no, you know, small victories here. You either come up high on the scoreboard or you don't. But when we look at that fourth quarter, 18 points by my count for the Cardinals and 18 points for the Lancers. So essentially, again, silver lining and, and finding the, the glass being half full, uh, the second half for the Cardinals was 35 for the Cards and 31 for the Lancers. So the Cards won that second half, but just too much varsity experience, uh, too much length, too much athleticism, too much strength inside with Sullivan. And we'll crunch some final numbers for you here in just a minute, but... Well, what do you take from this if you are Coach Orlando with this young Cardinal squad? Well, uh, you found yourself in a hole, a deep hole, entering the second half, and you battled back. Uh, and you outscored this team 35-31 in the second half. So you have to be pleased on that end of things. However, the first half, too many turnovers, too many missed opportunities, um, not getting back on the transition defense, and uh, not pounding the glass you get beat uh, on both sides offensively and defensive rebounds and all that being said you still came back and played a heck of a second half this is a, uh, a BG team that will play in the holiday tournament in Hollis as uh, coach Orlando talked about uh, hopefully we'll be there to cover one of those uh, two uh, games or that round robin tournament maybe on the 28th the highlight guy will be there they will see their next regular season action on January 5th when they host Pinkerton Academy, one of those top-tier teams that we spoke about along with Portsmouth and Bedford and uh, obviously what the Londonderry team that we saw out. Hang with these teams for a full game. When you get to the second season, maybe you can make some things happen. You have to like the, the fight that the Cardinals put up in that second half. But Londonderry just too much uh, in the early going of this one and, and kind of cruised uh, to a victory. Want to congratulate both of these teams for a job well done. Want to thank you all for uh, watching us here on the Highlight Guy. Uh, Want to thank Coach Gibbs earning that uh, Starbucks uh, $5 coffee card today. Uh, you didn't wear the Santa hat, though, Steve. I'm a little... A little upset. Thought Coach Gibbs got some Bedford colors in here. Thought he would have looked good in that, but respectfully declined. But want to thank him for uh, for joining us. I'm sure his players that are watching at home would have liked to have seen him in that uh, that holiday hat as well. I got I got my uh, my sweater on today. It's a it's a good look. Don't know if you can see. We got Santa and uh, and Rudolph doing the dab there with the the crystal or the uh, the disco ball. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> We want to wish you all a very happy holiday, very Merry Christmas, a very happy New Year, reminding you all that it is not the critic who counts, but you can always count on the critic. Take care, and we'll see you real soon, everybody. Good night.